Welcome to today's lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about adaptability and embracing change as entrepreneurs. This lesson has three objectives. The first objective is understanding the importance of adaptability. This is important for us to start off the lesson by understanding why we need to develop uh, adaptability as entrepreneurs. Why do we need to be able to embrace change? And it begins with adaptability. Because once we understand what adaptability is, we'll realize that it is a key cornerstone of the entrepreneurial success. The second objective of this lesson is to be able to identify key drivers of change. You see, the thing is in entrepreneurship, if we don't adapt to change, we are dead in the water. So it is important to be able to see change as it happens and to notice or be aware of key uh, uh, issues that are always creating change. For example, you have technological advancements. Every other month there's something new that is happening technologically, globally and even locally. And as a result, those entrepreneurs who do not adapt to the new changes or embrace the change are usually affected negatively. Another example of uh, a key uh, driver of change is changing consumer preferences. You know, one day consumers like things a certain way, the next day they like things a different way. What are you doing as an entrepreneur to adapt to that change? And these are just two examples that we're going to delve into as we go through the lesson. The third objective is for us to learn and to learn strategies for embracing change. You see, the thing is, once we've learned about all of these key drives of change and why adaptability is important, we need to learn how to actually practice uh, adaptability, how to actually embrace change, not just know about it, but embrace it and actually uh, uh, evolve as entrepreneurs to be able to navigate change well. So, what is adaptability? Adaptability is the quality of being able to adjust to new conditions or circumstances or it is the capacity to be modified or adjusted for a new purpose. In other words, what we mean here is, are we able to navigate or take advantage of, of changes as they happen? Or when we find ourselves in new circumstances, are we able to position ourselves to perform just as well as we performed in previous circumstances? And whilst we're at it, let us also discuss what embracing change is. Embracing change basically is displaying a willingness to accept change as it happens or to be in a position where you're not affected by change, rather you see it as an opportunity. Another way of looking at it is also accepting that change is an integral part of not only the entrepreneurial journey but life itself. So it really is about displaying an open-mindedness about change and you know, seeing it as something to embrace as opposed to fear. Embracing change is especially important when you consider your own routines and your own comfort zones, you know, because change really ultimately means or often means that we have to change the way we do things. And particularly in a, and this can be challenging, particularly in a situation where we're used to doing things in a certain way. So external change might mean that we have to change the things that we do. And so embracing change is really saying, I'm okay with changing the things that I'm comfortable with. I'm okay with getting into uncomfortable situations because change has necessitated that kind of process. And ultimately, that is the mindset that through this lesson, we want you to be able to imbibe and display and champion. Now, let us explore the entrepreneurial landscape and how it is always changing and evolving. And in this uh, discussion, we're going to be talking really about those major factors that affect that change or push that change that are always making that change happen in the entrepreneurial landscape. We'll start with rapid technological advancements. You know, when you're talking about technological advancements, the pace of technological evolve, evolution is ever increasing. You know, what used to happen or how technology used to advance 20 years ago is even faster today. And this is something that as entrepreneurs, we must, we must, to be quite honest, always be aware of and always be prepared to, to receive the change that is happening and ask ourselves, 
how can I be part of this change? How can I evolve my business to be part of this change? How can I grow myself? How can I develop myself to take advantage of this change? Because, you know, we have learned through many examples that uh, as technology advances, if you don't advance with technology, you get left behind. For example, let's talk about artificial intelligence. There are so many jobs and tasks that were usually done by human beings that can now be done faster and more efficiently by artificial intelligence. And whilst this may be sad for all those people who are losing jobs, have lost jobs, or are about to lose jobs globally, and even on this continent, it is a huge advantage or can be a huge advantage for entrepreneurs because then you don't have to hire as many people to do re repeatable uh, tasks. This can be done by artificial intelligence for a, a tiny fraction of the cost of hiring a person. So it is important to adapt because imagine as, a, as an entrepreneur hiring 20, 30 people whilst your competitor only has five people and is using artificial intelligence to beat you. Where you have huge overheads, your competitor won't have those overheads and they might be able to charge lower prices for their services because they don't have so many costs going into producing their service or product. So in that case, you need to adapt or also jump on the bandwagon of artificial intelligence and see how you can use artificial intelligence to improve the efficiency of your, your organization or your company. The next key driver of change in the entrepreneurial landscape that people often you know, take for granted is changing consumer preferences. You know, I've seen many businesses come and go because they refuse to adapt to changing consumer preferences. You see, ultimately the consumer is the person that you're serving, is the person that makes your business make sense because they are the ones who are paying for the services or products that you're producing. So it is important for us to always keep our finger on the pulse of the consumer because as their preferences change, we need to be adapting to those changes. And in this day and age where we have uh, social media influence, preferences change daily. And we need to also be alive to the fact that, uh, uh, you know, there's so much influence from, from, from social media. And it doesn't matter wherever you are in the world. When something new pops up anywhere else in the world, it becomes a trend all over. So we need to be alive to these trends. We, we, we shouldn't be those kind of entrepreneurs who, who say, you know, uh, social media is not for me. Yes, you might not like social media for yourself, but it is important for you to understand social media from a, a trend spotting perspective. Always interact with your, your consumers. Always find ways of getting, extracting information from your consumers, particularly from a preference perspective, so that you are always aware that, of whether or not you are on at par with their preferences. Of course, uh, you don't want to be changing your, your, your products and services on a daily basis. But if it necessitates you changing on a daily basis, you have to. Because what's the point of holding on to old ideas and, and old ways of doing things when your consumers have moved? Especially in this competitive uh, landscape. When you're talking about changing consumer preferences, think about this example. One opens a restaurant today and it's, 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 you know, all the buzz in town, you know, everybody is excited to try the new menu, to try the new surrounding, the, the ambience, the atmosphere in that, uh, in that restaurant. And then the sad thing is imagine yourself keeping the same ambience for a whole year instead of finding ways to adjust it. You know how people take pictures of the food, take pictures of themselves, take selfies of themselves in these restaurants and, and they share. Soon enough, it becomes boring. People move on to the next thing and they have to find newer, exciting experiences. So if you don't find ways of improving the experience and changing the experience, you'll soon enough find that people are not coming to your restaurant, particularly in this day and age, which is so driven by, by, by social media and looking good on social media. If what you have to offer is done, is so old, you have to change, you have to shift it. Otherwise, you become irrelevant as a restaurant. Even if you're producing good food, you're producing a good ambience, people have moved. So what are you going to do? You have to find ways of evolving. Another important key driver of change in the entrepreneurial landscape is intense global competition. You know, through globalization and the internet, the world has become very small. Today, you can buy something from China or America that is produced locally. 
So if it's, it's a better product, if it's a cheaper product, why not buy from, from wherever? If it's cheaper than what you have locally, if it's better than what you have locally. As entrepreneurs, we have to understand that we're competing with everybody. We're competing with every company, every entrepreneur globally. And we mustn't rest on our laurels that we are closer to the consumer. That doesn't matter anymore. It is even worse now for us Africans because we have the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. We have literally, from a trade perspective, just abolished the borders throughout the whole of Africa. What does it mean for you as an entrepreneur? It means you have to be aware of this fact. You have to be one with this fact and know that you're not only competing with the 200 other entrepreneurs that are in the same space as you in your own country. But now the competition has jumped from 200 to possibly 2,000 or even 20,000. So what are you going to do to differentiate yourself? What are you going to do to, to be closer to your customer? At least even whether it's brand uh, uh, positioning or, or price or, or quality, whatever it is, you must find ways of being better than all your competitors because I tell you what, they are coming for you. No matter what you think, they are coming for you. Somebody younger is, is trying to prove themselves, is trying to build up their company, is might even be hungrier than you. You have to always be aware of that. And as scary as, as uh, new developments like the, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement being instituted, as scary as that may be, it is also an opportunity. When you used to have maybe 2,000 customers just from your own country, now you have the whole continent as a base, as an opportunity for, for many more customers to serve. So it actually is more opportunity for your business, more opportunity for you to, to evolve your offering more opportunity for you to increase the revenue in your company by reaching out to many more customers out there. So, you see, this is what embracing change is all about. It comes as a challenge at first, but when you look at it from the other angle, oh, this is actually an opportunity for me to make, to reach more customers and actually make more profit for my company. Because that very same internet that has destroyed borders, whilst uh, it means more people from outside of your country can compete with you. It also means that you can also compete with them in their own countries. And, you know, you actually might have a better perspective, a better understanding of the issues or the, the preferences that consumers might, might enjoy in their country because there's a, a, a faster shift in your country. So imagine taking something newer that is happening in your country. For example, in Africa, we championed Amapiano and Afrobeats. Those are things that we produced here and we realized that they were so popular. And as Africans, we need to be able to take those things and champion them everywhere else in the world and not wait for somebody outside there to come and take this that we produce locally and champion it themselves. We are the ones who should be using the internet and other means that are available to us, technological advancements, to champion these things and own them even if we champion them or even if we distribute them outside of Africa. So you see, now we have a huge opportunity to go beyond the, the, the billion people that are in Africa and reach the 7 billion people all over the world with unique products that we have produced locally. Another key driver of change to think about and consider is policies. You know, every now and then governments change policies, whether it's, a, it's because there's a new government in power or the existing government is trying to reject the economy, trying to do, do something different. You know, and this can be detrimental because, you know, when policies change, that means you change the whole way of doing business. And sometimes it affects whole industries. Sometimes, for example, uh, in, in our country, uh, the government was trying to boost the production of vegetables and they closed the border for imp importation of vegetables. While that was a, a disaster for, for hotels and local hotels and, and, and uh, uh, food establishments, this was a huge opportunity for farmers. And even some of these hotels have actually delved or dived into farming and producing vegetables for themselves, which has increased their own revenue where now they're producing their own vegetables, which is something that they never thought about before when the, when the borders were open. So this is, was, was an opportunity that arise from a change in policy, which whilst it seemed detrimental at first, it became an opportunity when one applied themselves. So these few examples, and these are not the only drivers of change that you can think of. You probably have 
even as we are discussing, we have been thinking about other drivers of change that affect the entrepreneurial landscape. But the key thing to realize here is that the entrepreneurial landscape is always changing and it will always change. Whatever, it, whatever key driver or whatever driver it is, it is always going to change. So what does this mean for us as entrepreneurs? We must be adaptive. We must always be looking out for this change. We must embrace it and we must be adaptive. So not only must we be adaptive, but we must be agile and move fast to actually implement the strategies that we want to, to, to use to actually take advantage of the opportunities we see in the change. Because if we don't, we might find ourselves working on plans that by the time we actually implement those plans, another change has happened. And so we are making changes for something that was okay yesterday, but today things are different already. What is the importance of adaptability in entrepreneurship? To start with, adaptability ensures that you survive or you are sustainable as a business. And you know, I don't want to, you to think about this as a threat. The truth is, if you don't adapt, as a business you die, period. If you don't adapt to the changes that are happening in your industry, in the entrepreneurial landscape, you're going to be left behind. Because customers move. What, you know, even if it's a policy change like I mentioned earlier, it shifts the whole industry or system or ecosystem. So what are you going to do as an entrepreneur if you cannot shift with that change, if you cannot adapt to that change? You're going to be dead in the water. You're not going to survive. Your business is going to be here one day and gone tomorrow. Another fundamental importance of adaptability is that it fosters innovation and creativity. You see, the thing is this, when you first encounter change, first you have to recognize it, and then you have to start thinking, what am I going to do? How am I going to navigate this change? When you have an adaptable mindset, when you, you are thinking adaptability, how can I adapt to this situation? You become creative. And you know what creativity is ultimately for me? It really is about saying, what can I do with what I already have? Instead of trying to change my business and going into a different industry at all, what can I use? What can I take advantage of? from the position I already am in to be creative and shift and adapt to the change that is happening. For example, during the COVID, which presented uh, um, perhaps the most painful change that we have seen economically for a, for a generation, many companies and, and entrepreneurs succumbed to, to that change, to, 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 to the threat of COVID and to the economic threat of COVID. But those who were creative uh, managed to weather the change. I'll give an example. In the restaurant business or in the food service industry, because of lockdowns, many companies or many uh, restaurants were unable to continue operating. But some were clever. They switched to, to home deliveries. And in fact, they became so successful in that time and were able to continue providing home deliveries that they've even reduced the spaces that they, they occupy, the expensive spaces that they occupy in shopping malls and whatnot, and have now are now operating from cheaper spaces, but they're delivering. For example, consumers have also adapted to the idea of enjoying their meals at home. So the trend has actually continued in some, in some aspects. And those companies which were able to evolve in a creative way, continue to reap the benefits of that evolution. As entrepreneurs, we must always be thinking adaptability. We must always strive to be adaptable, to be able to adapt to changes as they, as they come. Because in that way, we become more competitive. You know, you don't want to come into an industry as a new player and be the exciting new player and people move towards you. And then over time, not be adaptable to change and then become an old player and become the one that is being taken down and less competitive. You must always be thinking adaptability. How can I be more competitive? In that way, what you'll find is that consumers will always drift towards you, will always think about you, will always be thinking that this institution or this company, this entrepreneur is always bringing up new options, new, new, new variations of what they are providing us. And that is exciting for consumers. Because of social media, consumers have short attention spans. It's a side effect of social media. It's not like uh, I like it or you like it, but it is the reality that we are living with. Consumers 
are having shorter and shorter attention spans. As entrepreneurs, how do we keep adapting? How do we keep our services and products exciting? How do we keep our brands evolving in such a way that they are always exciting and always eye-catching and always able to catch the attention of our consumers? Because if we don't, the new guy, the new kid on the block is going to come up with something new. And because they're new, they're trying to take you down. They're going to perform better than you. And you're going to ask yourself, where have the customers gone to? We have to always be competitive because if we're not competitive, the customers will go. When you're adaptable as an, as an entrepreneur, particularly when you're starting out or you're you are a small entrepreneur, it's easier to uh, uh, see the gaps in the industry that you're working in. And therefore, it's easier to be more competitive than the giants. Because remember, the giants are slow to move, are slow to shift. As a small entrepreneur, you're able to shift faster. You're able to actually make changes faster and be adaptable faster. But only if you imbibe and embrace the adaptability kind of mindset that is required in entrepreneurship. Sometimes the change, changes as they happen, they open gaps where you can provide a niche service. Because sometimes, and in those niche services, you usually find that the big players in your industry don't really care about those, those niches because they're trying to make money in, in the millions and even billions of dollars. But you, you might be an entrepreneur where 100,000 or uh, uh, even just a million is a huge advantage for you or is a huge boost in your revenues. And these opportunities usually come in small gaps in the industry and they present themselves as niches. And only those who are adaptable are able to change or take advantage of, of those gaps and, and, and produce for those niches. So in essence, the importance of adaptability is that you can embrace uh, uncertainty. You know, entrepreneurship is uncertain because of the fact that change is always happening. But when you're adaptable, you can embrace that, those, those challenges and you can find yourself thriving in the face of uncertainty. Let's talk about a few real world examples that you and I probably know of companies that either took advantage of change and, and uh, thrived because of change or succumbed to change and don't exist or don't perform as well as they used to. The first example is Netflix. When the world moved from DVDs and video cassettes to online digital media, they were the first pioneers. They saw a gap, they saw an opportunity. And instead of holding on to the old way of doing things, where we had a store where, which was full of video cassette tapes and people would come in and rent them out for the weekend, they created a platform in which all these movies and shows that we loved were readily available on our iPads, on our TV screens at home, on our phones. And today we are talking about a multi-billion dollar company that is Netflix. Everybody knows Netflix. In fact, there are even jokes and memes made uh, uh, using Netflix. Things like Netflix and chill. That is how ubiquitous Netflix has become. In, fa in fact, I've often seen in certain industries, uh, people use examples like Netflix to say, we want to become the Netflix of the Netflix of, that's how big they are because they saw a gap in the industry and took advantage of, advantage of it and they became leaders in that industry. Even when bigger, big players like Disney Plus and Apple TV came, uh, uh, saw the opportunity after them, they have never re really been able to uh, remove Netflix from the number one spot because they were first players, they saw the opportunity and when it wasn't fashionable, they stepped in. Another interesting example that is often talked about is Nokia. <laughs> you know, there's this famous quote from uh, the Nokia CEO at the time who said, you know, we didn't do anything different, but we're not number one anymore. Okay, yes, I might have butchered his quote, but the idea there is that he was complaining about how one day they were number one, the number one phone company in the world, and then the next they were not, but they didn't do anything differently. And that is exactly the problem. The fact that they didn't do anything differently, the fact that they didn't spot the change and embrace it when it was happening is the fact that Nokia is no longer number one. Today we talk about Samsung, we talk about Apple, the Apple iPhone as the biggest iPhone producers in the world. Why? Because 
when they saw the changes happening, they adapted and they keep on evolving their, their, their offerings. Every year there's a new iPhone produced. Every year there's a new Samsung phone produced with uh, changes that adapt to the changes in consumer preferences. They are always, in fact, some of, sometimes they even lead the consumer. They produce or, or, or give us something so new, so exciting that we're excited to even ditch a phone that we bought last year and to buy a new one because they are in fact now driving change. But unfortunately, Nokia failed to see this change and when they saw the change even, they failed to, to evolve and now they are chasers, they're not leaders anymore. Another interesting company that you might not know of or not know of how they failed to embrace change is Kodak. In fact, the Kodak story is very interesting. Over 40 years ago, a company called Kodak was able to produce the first digital camera. 1975, can you imagine that? They produced the world's first digital camera. Nobody had produced it by that time. But unfortunately, they didn't see it as an innovation enough to actually push, push it as, 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 as an innovation or push it as, as something that the world can adapt to. And what do we have here today? Kodak is a company that has been. There are other leaders in the digital camera space where Kodak was the first. In fact, Kodak was the pioneer. Unfortunately, Kodak didn't see the opportunity. And because they didn't see the opportunity, who knows Kodak today? You're probably hearing of Kodak for the first time in many years because I'm mentioning it in this lesson. But we know of Canon, we know of Nikon, and we know of so many digital uh, uh, camera companies. In fact, even the phone companies like Samsung and, and, and Nokia and, and the rest and, and, and uh, Apple are the ones that are championing, championing di digital photography because now they're bringing it into the phone. In fact, <laughs> that is also a challenge to the camera, uh, the digital, the traditionally tra digital camera companies because they're bringing in cameras into a phone, something that is always in people's pockets. So that is another change that Somehow, the traditional companies have to adapt to. Otherwise, one day you're going to find that Nokia, or rather Samsung or, or Apple is producing a camera that is in the phone that is just as of good quality as the traditional Canon or Nikon or whatever company that you know is a traditional camera company. These are big global companies, but the same issues that affect them can affect you as an entrepreneur. You have to look around you. You have to look at your industry. You shouldn't just always just look at your profit and, your profit and loss uh, 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 account. You shouldn't always just be looking at your balance sheet and your little shop or whatever it is that you're doing. You should also be able to look at the wider industry that you're you are operating in, the wider economy that you're operating in and see where are the opportunities and the changes that are happening instead of sticking just to old ways. Because these stories that I've just talked about can affect you. These highlight the transformative power and impact of either embracing change or not embracing change. You could be here one day and gone the next day. Or you could be here one day as a small player and tomorrow exist as a big player because you took advantage of the changes that were happening in the industry. Remember that the third objective of this lesson was for us to develop and understand that there are strategies for embracing change. So this is what we're going to discuss now. The first strategy that I'm going to delve into is just the ability to see change. You know, because if you can't see change, how can you embrace something that you can't see? If you don't notice change as it happens, how can you uh, evolve? What are you evolving for? You know, first you must recognize that um, if in your business you make profit and you're making a certain amount of profit and you continue to make profit, the same amount of profit year after year and nothing changes in that aspect. That means there's no change. But we have just discussed that that is impossible. There will always be change. So as soon as uh, what you're used to in your own company, the performance of your own company changes, that means there must be some other change elsewhere that is impacting your company. So what is it? You should be able to sniff it out. You should be able to observe. You should be able to be curious to say, huh, this, this is different. What, what, make, what, what made this different? What, what is happening out there? What is impacting me? I used to have 20 customers. Now there are 10 customers. What is happening? What is the change that is, that is contributing to this, to this shift? That is the first important strategy to be able to recognize change 
not just as it happens but even as, as it has happened because remember when you first came into your industry when you first got into entrepreneurship you were seeing some sort of advantage or some sort of opportunity that maybe existing players were not seeing because if you didn't see it as an opportunity you wouldn't have gotten in so what were they those who were there before you supposed to see don't be like your predecessors once you're now inside the industry always be willing to observe the change and accept it you know sometimes <laughs> we want to hold on to the old way of doing things because that is our comfort zone i mean we have been making money anyway but when change happens we must not only be able to see it but be able to uh, accept it and say look i don't like it but it is change so let me now start assessing this change and see how i can pivot how i can reposition my company and myself as an entrepreneur just now when I was talking about the ability to recognize change, I mentioned something important. The ability to have a, a curious mind. If you don't have a curious mind, you won't be able to uh, uh, implement the next strategy, which is the ability to cultivate a continuous learning mindset. What does this mean? You must be able to embrace a personal commitment to learning new things. If you can't learn new things, if you are not curious, one, you won't notice change as it happens. And then if you are not uh, uh, committed to learning new things, you are not going to be able to implement the change because <laughs> as much as there's change happening externally, for you to take advantage of that change, you yourself have to change. And then to, to, to be able to change, you have to be able to learn new things because you might be in a situation where the change that has happened in your industry necessitates a new way of doing things. So not only should you be able to see the change as it happens, but you should be able to change yourself. And then therefore, for you to be able to change, you have to be able to learn new ways, ways of doing things because that's what might have been affected. It, the thing that might have been affected in the external change is the way of doing things. Maybe it could be uh, the way in which a product is delivered, where we are used to customers coming to your shop, but now customers are now used to things being delivered in their home. So maybe this is something that you're not used to. And this is uh, uh, um, something that your business is not prepared for. So maybe you have to now start thinking about, okay, so maybe now I have to employ a driver, a delivery driver, I need to now have a, a delivery van, or I need to work with a delivery company. That means understanding how these delivery companies work, uh, what are the new costs involved, how do I transfer that cost to the consumer in such a way that uh, the consumer accepts it and they don't run away. You know, these are new things that you have to learn and therefore you have to have or be able to, to, to think uh, uh, how do I learn, how do I continuously learn, how do I embrace learning. You have to have to be able to cultivate a continuous learning mindset, learn new things. Earlier on I mentioned artificial intelligence. Many, new, many entrepreneurs are using artificial intelligence to improve their business processes. So artificial intelligence is not something that will just magically work or come into your company and work. It's something that has to be applied. Whilst there's a huge improvement tool, it has to be contextualized to your company. And you are the one who has to understand how artificial intelligence works and how to merge it with your company and look at what processes in your business, in your company can actually be improved uh, with artificial intelligence. So there's a whole huge learning curve in there you, and you have to be able to evolve with artificial intelligence even as it evol evolves by really cultivating that continuous learning mindset. Another important strategy for embracing change is to always be in a position where you foster open communication and you seek feedback from the various stakeholders in your business. What stakeholders am I talking about? I'm talking about your consumers, your customers. I'm talking about your, your investors, if you have investors. I'm talking about a stakeholder such as the government because the government is the one that sets policies and enables the ecosystem for your business to actually exist in. Uh, I'm talking about such stakeholders as even your competitors because they're playing in the same uh, ecosystem as you. The changes that they institute when they improve their products and offerings or when they lag behind, it means something. But you always have to have an ear uh, uh, or have uh, an eye 
for observing and yeah, for, for listening to the, the changes, the ripples in your industry. And they're always going to be coming from these stakeholders and other stakeholders that I haven't mentioned. And in fact, even your employees, if you have employees, because employees are usually at the forefront of the change as it happens. They see it, they are usually are able to see it before it happens or as it happens so be able don't be that uh, uh, entrepreneurial leader who doesn't talk to their uh, employees or rather who doesn't seek feedback from the employees it is important to always seek feedback you know when you have the opportunity walk the shop floor interact with your 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 customers get feedback from them conduct uh, consumer customer surveys you know go for industry fairs and industry you know meetups where you are able to learn about the new things and the new developments that are happening in your industry lest you are left behind remember this type of engagement affords you the opportunity to be well informed to see the data firsthand to be able to then create plans and approaches to actually take advantage of those changes as they happen the next important strategy is the ability to stay ahead of the curve and become a trendsetter. You know, sometimes it's, yes, it's easy to not become a trendsetter because then you don't have to innovate. But unfortunately, if you don't innovate, if you don't imbibe the ideology of becoming a trendsetter, even if what you're currently doing is working, you might find that somebody else somewhere is actually developing the kind of thing that is going to set the trend and you don't want to be behind because these things affect the perception of consumers like how it, these things affect how consumers perceive your company or your organization for example if one company is perceived more of a trendsetter than yours people generally de uh, 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 deviate to that company remember being a trendsetter is not only anticipating shifts in in, in industry uh, approaches but it's also saying you know what this is the way this industry is going, but I think it can go in a better way. I think we can develop it. I think this industry can, or, or the consumers, or the customers in, the, in, in this industry can be served better. And this is the idea that I'm going to implement. And when you're a trendsetter, you don't have to um, spend huge sums of money to implement new ways of, of doing things. You can test the market with, with small changes. You know, have a small budget and say, I'm going to introduce a small pro uh, product or a new product in a small way and see what the response is. And when the response is good, then you know that you can, you know, pump up the, 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 the resources to now really push the new trend, to push the, the, the boundaries of your industry. Being a trendsetter allows you to proactively identify opportunities before change actually happens. And, you know, that is the best position to be in. When you are the trendsetter, everybody follows. And because everybody follows, they're, whilst they're still trying to figure out how you are doing these things, how you, are, uh, 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 how you have the competitive advantage, you are now really now getting entrenched. You are now really uh, entrenching yourself as the leader, as the market leader, whilst they're still trying to figure you out. And then finally, the strategy that I'm going to talk about is the ability to cultivate resilience and, and, and flexibility. You see, sometimes, unfortunately, when changes happen, we don't realize them for one reason or another, and we get left behind. So what do we do in such situations? Do we fold and give up? Or do we say, okay, I might have been left behind, but how do I then catch up? How do I, uh, uh, what is it that those people who have, or those entrepreneurs who have left me behind and moved ahead what is it that they might have missed out on that m maybe because of my perspective by being left behind i can see the mistakes that they've made by rushing ahead that is only something that can come from cultivating a, a, a mindset of resilience and and flexibility where you say to yourself okay i might have left be been left behind i might be facing the set, set i might be facing the setback rather so how do I, what, what is the opportunity in this setback? What can I learn? What, what can I, how can I reorganize myself in such a way that I can possibly catch up to my competitors or even leapfrog them? And then zoning in again on flexibility. Flexibility is one of the things that will actually help you embrace change because remember the, 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 the formula goes, see change, 
once you've seen change ask yourself how can i take advantage of this change and then implementation of the new uh, uh, strategies but how do you implement those strategies if you are inflexible you have to be flexible to say okay we were going this way and we had we had you know processes we had a way of working everybody in my company was was uh, conversant with how things worked and things were working so smoothly so now there's going to be a bit of a break in the way we do things because we have to adapt and shift and do things in a different way so if we're not flexible that process can be difficult and whilst you might have been better than most people in that you identified the change before everybody else if you are inflexible you might not be able to implement the new changes that you require uh, and then therefore be a leader so flexibility is a key element of of embracing change now i know we have discussed change and you might pro possibly be very excited to go uh, uh, observe changes in your industry and, and see how you can take advantage of these opportunities that you might observe. But I must make you aware of some of the challenges that come with embracing change or with having to embrace change. The first challenge is overcoming resistance to change. You know, sometimes personally, it is just so hard to change because it's just easier to do the thing that we have always done. We must always be careful to observe this thing because if you are not able to observe your own resistance to change or maybe your team members resistance to change, you, you, you might fail in your endeavors. Sometimes it's the consumers. You're producing something that is actually revolutionary and might change the lives of the consumers, but they are somehow resistant to change. This calls for us being able to understand how to effect change and how to um, manage change. Man change management is an important tool if we are, if we are to succeed in this ever-changing uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. So talking about change management, in your own institution, apart from yourself, you must be able to institute a culture of, of, of uh, uh, evolution, a culture that is open to change a culture that is excited about change that know that where people in your company in your team know that change is actually an opportunity instead of thinking of it as a challenge or a threat to their jobs that this is an opportunity to actually increase revenues for the company increase uh, even the possibility of a promotion so that way you find yourself as a company you are primed to actually navigate uh, uh, changing ecosystems, changing landscapes for the better. When you and your team members are open to uh, evolving strategies and evolving as a company be because of change, you are primed to actually do well and perform excellently as a company. If you are already an entrepreneur, you might remember that when you first started, it was an exciting time because you are bringing in new ways uh, of doing business. You are bringing in a new product, a new service that you had analyzed your, your potential competitors and you had told yourself that, okay, I'm going to bring something fresh and new to the, to the industry. But what you realize that as you grow, you quickly come to a place where you, you, you stabilize and you become a status quo company. It's just the natural way of doing things because when you first come in, like I said, things are exciting, you're bringing in something fresh and then it quickly becomes normal. And this thing ends up becoming a culture in the company, but which is a very dangerous thing because when it's time to change, the culture has to shift. It has to jump back to that time when you are bringing in fresh, exciting things. So it is important to continuously uh, embrace a culture or develop a culture within your organization that is always embracing change, seeing change uh, as, as a time for opportunity, an opportunity to create something new, a time to, to do exciting things. When you always have that culture and you're always developing that culture, you find that you are never, you will never be as a company or even as an individual resistant to change, which can develop, that resistance develops over time. It's not like we all set out to be resistant to change, but it's something that creeps in over time. But if you're not careful to work against it, to not only work against it, but to develop a, a, a rich culture that is excited to do new things and excited to see opportunity in change, 
that is usually what happens we devolve or move back to resistance just as a as, as a reminder with change comes ambiguity or uncertainty that is a constant they, they are part and parcel of the same uh, problem so who likes uncertainty I would like to know that tomorrow when I wake up the things that I set out to do are, are going to happen in the way that I imagine that they will happen but that's not the reality that we live in change is a constant and therefore uncertainty is a constant however be aware that uncertainty brings in anxiety now if we were to succumb to anxiety or the anxiety of uncertainty and ambiguity would we survive as businesses maybe we shouldn't even be existing as entrepreneurs those people who crave certainty and crave uh, uh, and, you know the knowledge that tomorrow will work out the way yesterday worked out should not be in entrepreneurship so if we as entrepreneurs want to survive or want to get into entrepreneurship we must know that uncertainty is something that we cannot avoid so we must be able to live with uncertainty we must be able to not only live with uncertainty but thrive in uncertainty and the only way in which we can do that is by embracing change but be aware that this is a challenge and you know you can never get used to uncertainty that the levels of uncertainty that we get used to and then there's always higher levels of uncertainty and new changes that are always going to test our metal but we must always be aware of the fact that uncertainty will always be there so once you understand that uncertainty will always be there then you start to become comfortable with it to the extent that it doesn't scare you anymore that where you are able to not function normally as an entrepreneur creatively as an entrepreneur regardless of the uncertainty that exists another challenge that you're going to face as, a, as an entrepreneur is balancing traditional understanding of entrepreneurship and innovation what do I mean here let me give you an example as uh, 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 entrepreneurs today we are faced with the innovation of artificial intelligence and one of the things that we use artificial intelligence for is to create uh, sales sales wording you know the, the sentences and words that we can use in our adverts in our sales letters to our consumers as we reach out to our potential customers and consumers but we must remember that uh, ai for example chat gpt is just a machine the real understanding of your consumers particular specific needs uh, the market you are working in the nuances of, of your business and what advantages that your product or service has over other products can only be understood by you this can't be understood by the artificial intelligence so you have to first understand this very traditional thing you have to understand or have these very traditional skills entrepreneurial skills and they must be ingrained in you you must be able to read and extract this information from your ecosystem or from your industry or from the business that you're working in and be able to use that to prompt the artificial intelligence to create the 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 kind of uh, instructions or the kind of information that will actually work for you so on the traditional sense you must have the right or the traditional uh, entrepreneurial skills and then then you can use innovation to your benefit but if you don't have these as a basis then innovation is nothing it doesn't matter what innovation you have so it, it is that ability to not just be excited by new, new innovations but to also say from a foundational perspective from a traditional foundational perspective what do i have how am i am i grounded enough as an entrepreneur in the fundamentals that make a business successful to actually take advantage of innovation and actually make it work